Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flicks on how to beat. Today we're going to see how to beat the curse in Smile. Let's hop in and see what this is even. Because I haven't seen that movie so I don't know what's going on. If you were haunted by a demon that made people die in horrifying accidents, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the death curse in Smile. This woman is going to wish she never became a psychiatrist. Dr. Rosier is working at the hospital when her co-worker reveals a new patient has just been admitted. The police had dropped the girl off, but there's something deeply disturbing about her. Last week, she saw her professor die, and the girl was the oh. only witness to his death. Concerned, the doctor that walks into something. a room and finds the patient standing in the corner, terrified. Rose reassures the girl that she'll be safe here, and invites her to discuss what she's experiencing. But she'll regret asking this question. The patient joins like her at the table, and the girl explains she's been seeing an entity that takes on the form of different people throughout her day. Every time it appears, the creature will wear a terrifying smile, and has told the girl that today she's going to die. Rose tries to explain these delusions are a traumatic response kind of to stress, but the girl freaks out yeah. knowing that the doctor doesn't understand what's happening. Suddenly, the patient falls back in her chair and screams no, I mean, seriously, if the creature keeps appealing and saying, you're gonna die today, then that means it's kind of failing at its job. The person's still alive. Terror, trying to run away from something in the room. Terrible. Shocked, the doctor rushes over to the phone and immediately calls for help, but then it goes quiet. Looking around, she notices the patient staring at her with a gigantic grin on her face. The woman doesn't know the girl has been possessed by a demon and can only watch as she collapses to the ground dead. Later that day, the oh, doctor boy. is questioned by the authorities who ask about the mental state of her patient, trying to understand what caused her death. Rose explains the girl was having delusions that an evil entity was haunting her and was smiling before she suddenly dropped dead for no apparent reason. It sounds insane, oh, but soon this something. doctor will realize she's about <clears> to be <throat> haunted. Okay, this is really messed up. This girl was clearly in psychological distress and completely convinced Very that an much. evil presence was going to kill her. The doctor was trying to help, but didn't take the girl's fear seriously enough, and now she's dead with almost no explanation of why this has happened. What's even more suspicious is that the girl was a graduate student working on her PhD, oh. and that means she would already be outside of the normal demographic to be experiencing this kind of mental breakdown. Studies all mm. over the world have found that mental health issues are highest among people who have financial stress and unsustainable working conditions. The reason ah, this is strange okay. is because a student who's already working on her PhD would not only be competent enough to be accepted by the university, but it also means she's both financially and mentally stable enough to carry out the work. In fact, okay. most PhD well, students are usually offered a basic stipend to cover Holy. living expenses during their studies because they don't have the time to keep a regular job. So identifying a clear cause for her behavior is very very difficult mail? to do. Now, the biggest mistake that Holy Rose crap. here made was to tell the girl that everything is okay and immediately suggest that it's not as bad as she thinks. If someone believes they're being haunted by an evil presence, it could reveal oh, a lot about how movie. their mind works, and that's why if they were me, I would have asked as many questions as possible about what she's seeing and when to identify patterns that could explain the phenomenon. Oh, and come on. And we're back. Now, if you look at this girl, we can clearly tell from the heavy bags under her eyes that she hasn't been sleeping, and based on her disheveled appearance, Ooh. it's reasonable to assume she hasn't showered or changed clothes in days. These are classic really signs of grief, and since relax. we know she witnessed her professor die in front of her, there's a very good chance she might have had an intimate relationship with him without anyone knowing. A secret like this could plunge Maybe. someone into a moral crisis, and if it's there's true, it wouldn't be surprising <laughs> to discover she might even blame herself for his death. From this perspective, mentioning that you're being threatened by demons makes a lot of psychological sense to someone who's overwhelmed with guilt. And if the doctor had spent more time listening, she could have learned useful information because soon, Rose here is going to be plagued by the exact same curse. Having said that, everyone knows the best way to ward well, off an evil demon is yeah. by playing Raid Shadow Legends. Are you looking for uh, a no. brand new turn-based oh, MMORPG? Yeah, then talk. Raid And we're back. Rose heads home and tries to relax with a glass of wine. She can't get the dead girl out of her head, but that's when she notices someone is standing in the kitchen. Suddenly, a man calls oh, out to her something. and the lights turn on. Her fiancé Trevor has arrived and he walks over, asking how her day went, but learns that she witnessed her patient die. It's hard for him to see his fiancé like this and he pulls her into a hug, Again, but as Rose looks back towards the dropped. kitchen, she realizes there was nobody standing there. Later, oh. the woman has dinner with her sister, Holly, but is lost yeah, in thought. It. She can't stop thinking about what happened 
happened in the hospital, and that's when her sister asks if she's coming to her nephew's birthday. The woman explains she'll be busy working, and the couple can't believe their oh, ears. Frustrated, the aunt tells her she's working too hard and should be selling off their childhood home for profit, but the woman demands they change the subject. It's clear there's bad blood between these sisters, but it's only going to get worse. The next morning at work, sense, Rose though. asks a colleague <laughs> to find out more information about her dead patient's professor, and the woman promises to help, but that's when the doctor is interrupted by one of the detectives from yesterday. It's her ex-boyfriend, Joel, and he explains oh. he's here to check up on her, but Rose insists she's fine, walking away to her office. Inside, oh, she okay. reads through a witness statement from her dead patient and finds out her professor was smiling right before he died. It's eerily similar to what happened to the girl yesterday, but the eerily woman is interrupted similar. by it's a call exactly from her what sister, happened. answering Come the on. phone. Rose gets an apology for their argument last night as she walks over to the window, but then she sees something strange. There's a shadowy figure watching her in the distance, and it's making the doctor nervous. Walking down the hallway, the woman notices nope, that a patient creepy. is staring straight ahead, with a creepy smile on his face. It's weird, and Rose steps inside asking how the man is doing, but gets no uh, response. No, He's still sitting there grinning like a creep, spot, and she guys. tries to snap him out of it, but that's when everything goes wrong. Suddenly, the man turns to her, repeatedly saying she's going to die, and the doctor backs out of the room, calling out for help. The nurses rush in to restrain the man, but Rose is shocked thing. to realize no the patient was sleeping in bed this entire time. It doesn't make any oh. sense, and no, these no, hallucinations are going to escalate into the scariest things she can imagine. Okay, this is only going to get worse. <laughs> Rose here has just witnessed two different patients exhibiting the exact same symptoms, but what's Don't even more horrifying is that this is also what the girl saw her professor doing right before he died. It's way too specific to shrug off as a coincidence, and it means we have to consider there might actually be something a lot more sinister going on beneath the surface. If we're seeing the same thing that these other victims mm -hmm. have been seeing, then we either need to evaluate our own mental condition or decide to believe there's actually a demon that's haunting us and figure out how to defeat it. Now, Rose here seems uh, like she's mentally stable, but if things? you're paying attention, there might be signs that she's actually suffering from repressed trauma. First of all, we can see that she oh. has a tattoo on her back of a tree with its branches bending in the wind. Not only is it the only tattoo she has, but huh. it probably symbolizes a reminder to be grounded in herself, even when there are strong forces trying to move you. This might indicate an underlying no, instability she's tried sense. hard to protect like herself from, and a strong chance it stems from a childhood trauma. Secondly, we've also seen three separate occasions where she's starting to see things that aren't actually happening. First, she thought there was something in the shadows of her house, then a mysterious figure through the window, and lastly, the patient screaming that she was going to die. Okay, now hold on, I'm just gonna say this real quick. Seeing stuff in the shadows that's not really there, that's just humans in general. Well, I, come on, everyone out there that's seen this video, you've seen something like that before. Maybe you've seen a figure sitting in your chair in the bedroom, but no, it was a pile of clothes. Maybe you saw... Or oh, someone standing by your door, but no, it was just a jacket on a hook. The second one, okay, honestly can't explain that one. It could just be a person I was looking up at a different floor or whatever. And for this one, just don't be like, hi, and walk by. Hey, don't go in snapping in a person's face trying to get a response. That's how you get killed when he was actually laying in bed. These hallucinations are escalating to extreme psychosis, and, and if reality is beginning him. to slip the away hell? from us, then we can't trust anything that we see unless it's being confirmed by another witness. Before she died, the patient told us that she was seeing someone pretending to be other people, but it would smile as it told her she was going to die. It's been less than 24 hours, and now the exact same thing has just happened to Rose here. With this in mind, we have no choice but to accept the possibility that a demon is haunting us, and that's why if it were me, uh, I would make sure I was always no, in the company no, of at least two other hat. people I trust. It might be challenging to keep ourselves in large groups throughout the day, but if we see something that looks suspicious, we can confirm our reality with several others, helping us get a better sense of what is happening. We also need more than just one person, because if our only witness is acting strangely, Seriously, we would have no would other way to that? confirm that it wasn't a hallucination, so the more people we have around, the more likely we are to be grounded in reality. If this was an evil being, then it's fair to assume that the only reason it would be showing itself is because it wants to drive our paranoia and anxiety into extremes so that it can manipulate us into making horrible decisions. That's why the most uh, effective tactic right on. now is to distrust our own mental state until we find out more, and refusing to give this demon our attention might force him to finding a different strategy to get what it wants. Later. Whoop, hold on. Uh, and we're back.
The woman has a meeting with her boss and insists that the patient needed to be restrained, but the man disagrees. He thinks she's been affected by her former patient's death and demands she take a week off to recover. The woman knows what she saw, I mean, the but there's nothing she can do to convince him and accepts his offer. In Leaving bed. the hospital, Rose visits a shop to pick up a toy train for her nephew, hoping that things will get better, with no idea this gift is going to backfire. That Back night, she returns hell. home to relax and pours herself a drink when the thief alarm goes off, making the woman drop her glass. Terrified, Rose quickly picks up a knife, thinking that somebody has broken in. But when she walks over to the entrance, there's nobody there. The doctor checks huh. the security system and shuts off the alarm, but as she's heading back into the living room, Wait, she notices that the back knife. door is wide open. Suddenly, Those the phone sizzles. starts ringing and Rose quickly picks it up, finding out that the security system company has been alerted of a break-in. The woman explains that the back door has been left open, but then the person on the hotline taunts Rose, insisting someone else is in the house. That's when the phone rings again, and the woman turns to see Wait, the device is back on the table like she never picked it up. What Freaking out, the, the doctor hell? answers the phone, and this time it's the real security company, but she's too confused to respond. The police are called to the house, and the cops walk out, insisting they found no signs of a break-in. The woman asks about the back door, but the men the suggest it must have been left open, and that's when her fiancé arrives at the scene. Heading back into the house, he questions why she set the thief alarm, and Rose Rose tells him she doesn't remember turning it on. That makes the man concerned, and she insists there's nothing to worry about, but Trevor isn't sure he believes her. She's been acting more erratically, mm. and soon he'll discover the woman he loves is going insane. Later- Oh, come on. Let's go. That night, Rose listens to an audio recording of her former patient's last words before dying, and that's when she hears something strange. Playing back a section of audio, the doctor notices a ghostly breathing and tries to listen closer when suddenly the dead girl appears in the room. She backs away in terror before standing up and quickly takes out a knife to defend herself just as her fiancé comes running out of the bedroom. He doesn't understand what's whoa, going whoa, on, whoa. and there's nothing he can do to help. Okay, this is getting out of control. Not only is she starting to get haunted more often, but now we know this creature can make her think the phone was in her hand. This means we can't trust what we hear or what we see, and it makes the situation scary as hell. Every single person we meet could be this evil entity hiding in plain sight, so we need to come up with a strategy to figure out exactly when we're being haunted before it's too late. Now, as terrifying as yeah, this seems, kind of there might actually be a way we can take advantage of the situation. Face. Based on what we know, this evil being is manipulating our perception of reality. Out, but way. can only seem to do this externally. In other words, we haven't been possessed yet, and even though the demon has a lot of information about us, it doesn't know everything. One of the most important things to realize about demons is that they can't read your thoughts. Even though they're supernatural, no, they, they still rely on making observations about your behavior and what you say, and try to use it against you. We should expect that they level. also know our entire history, because a supernatural entity would live outside of time, and it means they would have access to a record of your entire life, like it was an encyclopedia. With well, all of this in mind, we have realm. to assume we are being watched 24-7, and I be mean. extremely careful not to say anything that can be used against us. But the more information like we can hide from the creature, boss. the easier it will Conjured be to boss. stop this thing from tricking us. That's why if it were me, I would look for something I can use as a totem, so that only I know the exact texture and weight of the object. This way, if we think there's a chance the demon has warped our reality somehow, then we can feel the totem, and if there are any differences, it will let us know that what's happening isn't real. This oh, has to be done with a lot of secrecy, thinking. because if we are spending time selecting and studying special objects, it's going to figure out what we're doing. That's why the smartest way to handle this is to grab something small, put it in your pocket, and study its texture out of the demon's view. This one simple tactic could make a okay, big difference, a really because keeping crucial idea. information private will limit the demon and how much it can manipulate us. If we're aware that the evil entity is starting kind of to like play tricks, then we'll have more him. time to do something about the situation, such as defend ourselves, or run away before it's too late. The next morning, the doctor... So by totem, he very much just means find someone small that you can carry with yourself and have at all times. Just even testing it. Yeah, I keep a Lytle with me. So what? I can have it. I can have it. And I couldn't speak for like five seconds though. <laughs> Moving on. Doctor visits her therapist and tells the woman about her dead patient. She suggests her obsession with the girl might be related to her mother's death, but Rose changes Ooh, the subject, revealing she's something. been hallucinating ever since the patient died. 
the delusions have been terrorizing her, and the therapist proposes she avoid anything that could remind her of the girl's traumatic death. With the session over, the woman heads to her sister's house so she can attend her nephew's birthday party. She's trying to enjoy herself and forget what's happened, but when the That's kid good. begins unwrapping his presents, everything goes wrong. He opens his aunt's present and is shocked to see what's inside. Confused, the boy pulls out a dead cat, and the doctor oh God, recognizes the it's hers. Rose doesn't remember killing her own pet, and tells the party goers she would never do something so horrible, but they all think she's crazy. That's when the woman notices one of uh, the guests yeah, smiling yeah, at her, go. as she realizes Let's the entity has returned, and is haunting her in broad daylight. Overwhelmed, the doctor What if it's this? This, this is all in our head of the demon, and the, the boy did open it to find a train, not a cat. Starts screaming, but suddenly the smiley woman appears in front of her, and Rose trips, falling straight into Ooh, a table. With no idea haunt. what's going on, she's brought Ow. to the hospital for treatment, where her boss makes sure she's okay, but the woman notices her fiancé getting into an argument with her sister. That night, Rose goes back to her fiancé's place, but before they head inside, she explains she's been haunted by the evil spirit that killed her patient. The man doesn't believe her, concerned that the woman is going crazy, and gets out of the car, Just following like him. A The doctor argues effect. she's not insane, and that's when the fiancé remembers that Rose might have inherited her mental illness from her mom. It's the only explanation that makes sense to him, and he tries to walk inside, but the doctor stops him. The woman insists she would never do anything to hurt him, but he suspects Rose killed their cat, making it clear he's afraid of what she'll do next. Desperate to oh, get answers, boy. the woman searches up her dead patient's professor, and quickly makes when a plan to find out more about cat. the curse before it's too late. It wasn't meant to. Okay, this is terrifying. Now the demon is haunting us during movie. broad daylight in the middle of a kid's birthday party, and killing our pets just to watch us freak out. It's actually actually a genius okay, strategy because demon. by doing this, the demon has turned everyone against us, convincing them we're mentally unstable and can't be trusted. At this point, we have to expect that anytime we ask someone for help, our friends and family are going to be much more likely to put us in heavy medication instead of believing our story. Keeping ourselves in a public environment isn't enough to stop the creature from manipulating us, and it means Clearly. we need to go a lot further Ow, in I've taking like matters punk. into our own Clearly. hands. It's reasonable to assume that if we know it's using our environment and perception against us, then by taking its tools away, it will have a lot less influence. That's why it might be a good decision to keep ourselves blindfolded throughout the day, making it ah, much harder to be manipulated. Up to this point, sight has been the only sensory perception it has tried to target, and if we don't see what it's doing, then we can't react to it. I would then try to communicate with the creature and ask what it wants. It's important to point out that as Whoa. powerful as they seem, That's supernatural cool. beings are bound by a lot of rules with what they're allowed to do, and it usually comes down to a set of preconditions that gives them the authority to attack someone. This becomes even yep. more apparent in exorcisms because the language that's always used in casting out demons has to do with their authority and the legal grounds they have to be in there in the first place. Now, we can't expect to argue <laughs> a legal case with, with a demon demons. that's a lot more knowledgeable about the subject than we are, but that doesn't mean we can't negotiate with it to help it get what it wants. If we're powerless to stop it, then the smartest thing we can do is help it, but insist that we will cooperate if it agrees to haunt someone else instead. From what we know, the monster seems to thrive hmm. off of psychological trauma because every victim so far has been a witness to someone's death. Rose here witnessed her patient die, and the patient witnessed her professor die, but this is such a rare and unlikely occurrence that it can't be a coincidence. With this in mind, I would return to work at the mental health clinic and offer the demon its selection of patients to terrorize as long as it leaves us alone. The best candidate might be an old war veteran because they would be the only other people in the clinic who might have witnessed someone dying, and if the demon is willing uh, to switch targets, we'll be free from its manipulation tactics as long as it gets what it wants. It sounds horrible, but it's a trade-off that's worth taking. If we can contain the demon into haunting hmm. people who are already under the institution's control, then we can also exert a small degree of control onto the demon by extension, and it puts us in a better Maybe. position to figure out how to destroy it. At the very least, it's this keeps the demon's bad behavior really away from the general the public, and wants. if no more cats are showing up dead at children's birthday parties, then it's still a worthwhile- <laughs> Oh, come on. And we're back wild strategy to take. The next morning, she visits the professor's widow, learning that the man had been behaving strangely and suffering from hallucinations before he died. The woman shows her his bedroom, which is covered in drawings of Whoa. smiling creatures, and she explains this all started after the professor had watched someone die. It's just like what happened to her, and Rose realizes that this evil entity Being gets transferred whenever someone witnesses death. its victim's hmm. death. Desperate, she asks the widow if her husband ever found an explanation for what happened, but the woman has had enough. She refuses to answer any more questions and kicks Rose out of the house, leaving Damn her more it. terrified Woman, than us. ever. With no one else to turn to, she visits her ex-boyfriend, Joel, and walks into his apartment. The woman begs him to look for any other police reports about the professor, and he reluctantly agrees. Searching him up, the detective discovers that the dead man had given a witness statement after seeing someone die a week earlier, and there are even photos from the crime scene. 
Rose takes his Ooh. computer, examining the horrifying pictures, and notices Why the victim is smiling. Hell? It's just like what happened with her dead patient, and the doctor oh asks him to check if there's a police report. He looks into it, discovering the victim had witnessed a stranger die in front of her eyes, and there's even a recording of the incident. They watch it together, and the doctor notices that before the victim died, he was smiling. That makes the cop realize there's a pattern, huh. and he asks Wait, her what's going on, like but Joel. Rose refuses to uh, answer. Him, Later I mean, that day, she heads to her sister's house to talk, and the know. husband insists she leave, but his wife reluctantly agrees to hear the woman out. The doctor explains that she's been cursed, showing proof that other people have suffered the same fate, but Holly thinks she's having a mental breakdown just like their mom. That makes Rose furious, insisting the woman doesn't know what she's talking about, and the sister makes it clear she's no longer welcome here. Frustrated, and the doctor useless. heads back to her car, but as she's considering her next move, Holly walks up to the window and stretches her neck to look inside. Oh, oh the God. entity nope, won't stop nope, making nope. the woman hallucinate, and there's nothing she can do to stop it. Okay, we finally nope. confirmed uh -huh. that there's a clear uh -huh. pattern here. As I mentioned before, no. most supernatural beings are bound by a strict set of rules that allow them to operate in the physical realm. And identifying this is the most important step we can take stuff. towards figuring out how to stop it. Uh -huh. From what we've learned, uh -huh. there's a long history of this thing making people die with the witness present, and will okay. then haunt the witness until it's ready to kill them too. As terrifying as this sounds, it's actually revealing a fantastic strategy we can use against it, because we don't just know what it wants, but also what it needs. With all this research, not one one of these victims died without a witness present, and it likely means that as long as we isolate and avoid contact with anyone, the demon won't kill us. That's why if it were me, I would strongly consider booking an Airbnb somewhere in the mountains, making sure it's as far from civilization as possible. As long as there isn't anyone around for the evil entity to use as a witness to our death, then it's the best way to stop the demon from getting what it wants. It's not a long-term strategy, but we can use the time to investigate as much as we can find, and if we aren't constantly worried about getting murdered, it will be a lot easier to to focus do. on finding clues that can destroy this demon or drive it out of our lives for good. Now, with that said, there might actually be a loophole here that we could take advantage of. According to their research, the demon would get transferred to the witness when the victim dies. But based on these past cases, the cause of death is always from a different method. If we had the time we needed to hmm. plan out a strategy, then I'd make sure I had as much control over this outcome as possible. That's why if it were me, I would cheat the demon by asking professional doctors to stop my heart and then bring me back like the Flatliners did. This way, we would be giving well, the demon exactly what it needs to get transferred to someone else, but without me having to die permanently in order to achieve it. It's obviously a risky strategy to take, well, but it's very possible it, that taking charge and exerting as much control over the situation as we can will effectively remove the demon's only weapon it has against us. Staging our deaths might even force the demon onto someone else that witnessed our heart stopping, and if it doesn't have any legal ground to haunt us anymore, then the demon would have no choice but to move on. That night, the doctor is eating in her car when Joel calls, revealing he's made a discovery. There were over 20 cases of someone <laughs> witnessing skull? a death before <laughs> dying themselves in front of another witness, but only one of the cases has a survivor. According to the oh. records, an accountant watched someone die, but instead of repeating the pattern, he killed a stranger to break the curse. The man oh. has been in prison ever since, but what's strange is that the only witness to the murder died a week later in front of somebody else. This guy might have the answers they're looking for, and with only days left before she dies, the doctor asks her boyfriend to take her to the accountant. Sure? Driving away, the woman asks him how long it took before the next victims died, and he reveals that at most, they never survived more than four days. The doctor oh. realizes tomorrow will be her fifth day, and the detective insists oh nothing will happen, but soon he'll be proven wrong. The next morning, they head to the prison where the accountant is being held, visiting the man to get some answers, and Rose asks him how he managed to survive the entity. He refuses to say anything unless the detective steps outside, and with no better options, the doctor insists she talk to him alone. The man leaves the room, and the accountant finally reveals he managed to pass on the Ooh, curse by killing me. someone else in front of a witness. He explains that the entity spreads through trauma, but the doctor freaks out, insisting that she can't kill somebody. Suddenly, the accountant realizes that the woman is cursed and panics, screaming at her to get out. He's terrified she'll pass the curse back to him, and the woman leaves, horrified at what she's just learned. Rose goes back to her fiancé's place, knowing that she doesn't want to die like the other victims, but can't bring herself to murder someone. So the woman has die, no idea what to do, you that's when she receives a text you message a from her choice. therapist asking if they can meet. Rose refuses to respond and goes to the kitchen to grab a knife, but before the doctor can do anything, the doorbell rings. She answers the door to find her therapist outside, and the woman insists they talk Wait, about I Rose's issues see. to make sure she's not a danger to anybody. If not, then the authorities will be called to deal with her, and the doctor has no choice except to let the woman inside. Sitting down on the couch, the therapist asks if she's still hallucinating, and Rose insists she's better now. Suddenly, the phone begins to ring, and the woman 
goes to answer the call, but then she hears her therapist on the other end. The doctor realizes uh, yeah, the person no, sitting yep. on the couch is the entity, and it starts oh. smiling, warning the woman it's almost time for her to die. That Terrified, is... Rose backs away from the creature as it walks forward, wait, wait, wait. but the entity won't kill her. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The entity is there. Run to the kitchen. Stab it. It's... It, it's there. It's physically touching you. Oh, well, you should... Attack it! Seriously, I mean... It, it shouldn't be that brain dead to attack the entity that is literally grabbing you by the mouth. Till it's got the perfect opportunity to pass on the curse. Okay, this is absolute nightmare fuel. When your own therapist wants to kill you, it's a good indication that you aren't living life the right way. But at this point, Rose here should have known better than to put herself in this position. She's already seen firsthand how the smiling demon can appear as anyone, and that it's going to be looking for the woman to exhibit signs of emotional distress to make an appearance. If we're paying attention to the patterns, the woman should have realized that this is exactly what was happening when her therapist showed up. Instead of obsessing over the records, the woman should have been meditating to protect herself from becoming emotionally vulnerable for the demon to haunt her. The second mistake she made was letting the woman in the door. She's already been dodging her calls, and if we we're already aware that the demon could become anybody, then this was clearly the dumbest thing she could do. If it were me, I would have stayed That's inside and ignored dumbest. the therapist, because if the woman suddenly Most started trying to force her way inside, it would prove to us it. immediately that this was the demon. From there, we could rush into the kitchen, grabbing a knife to defend oh, ourselves look. from the monster, but only after we left it no choice but to reveal itself. Now the truth is, it didn't even have to go this far. Earlier at the prison, we found out from this convict that he was the only person to have escaped the smiling curse, and the reason was because he murdered someone before it could kill him. As daunting as that sounds, the man is living proof that his method had worked, or else he would already be dead. This woman should be taking this news like it's a gift from God, because up until now, there has been no clear way to no, stop no, the no, creature no, no, from no, haunting no, 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 If no, it were no, me, no, the no, first no. thing I would have done is start experimenting with this information, and starting with smaller, insignificant life forms like bugs or mice to see if their sacrifices would be enough to end the curse on a technicality. It if it doesn't pack. work, then we would clearly need to kill a human, and animals. even for survival, that's a lot more difficult than it sounds. We don't want to escape the curse only to wind up in prison like this guy, and that's why the smartest approach here would be to make a poison. It just so happens that one of the easiest and most accessible poisons to create is ricin, because the toxins come naturally from castor oil seeds, and you don't need anything more than everyday kitchen equipment to extract enough poison to kill someone. From that point, oh. all we need to do is select a target That's and a delivery method. We want to make sure there are no traces of our involvement, so it should be given to someone random that we don't know and in an area that has no other witnesses. If we take a page out of Breaking Bad, the best approach might be to put it inside a cigarette and go to a bar, offering a half-empty pack to another smoker, explaining that we've just decided to quit. It's more than likely they will accept the gift, and over the course of a day or two, that rice and lace cigarette will end up getting smoked far away from us, making sure the demon has all the conditions it needs to officially leave us alone. Okay. Come that's a good idea. Up. Oh, let's continue. Coming up with a plan, the doctor heads into the hospital and finds one of her patients inside his room. Turning around, he realizes who she is and backs away in terror as the woman tries to reassure him <laughs> he's completely safe. Suddenly, her boss walks in and demands to know what's going on, but that's when Rose pulls a knife from out of her sleeve. Acting what quickly, the she attacks the patient, trying to pass on the curse, but he doesn't die no matter how many times she stabs him. Looking back at her boss, the doctor sees the man peel his face off, and she suddenly wakes up back in her car. Oh, the entity God, is tormenting her even drink. in her dream and there's nowhere safe from its influence. Rose is startled by her boss knocking on the car window, and he asks what she's doing here, but the woman lies, insisting she doesn't remember. Noticing the knife, he begs her to come inside and talk, but she freaks out and drives away as fast as possible. On the road, her ex-boyfriend calls, demanding to know what is going on, and the woman explains her new plan. The entity must have witnesses nearby to keep passing the curse to new victims, but if she stays alone, then there's no way anyone else will die. It's a smart strategy, but Joel and Sissy come to help, not realizing this will be his biggest mistake. That Parking the car, Rose arrives at her old childhood home and heads inside the abandoned building. With nobody else living in the area, the doctor is certain the curse won't be able to spread, and she walks into a bedroom, remembering how her mother died in bed. Rose could have oh, called man. for help, but she ran away, leaving her mom to die alone. It's a traumatizing memory, and the doctor begins preparing the house to face off against the entity, making sure no one will know where she is. That night, Except Rose hears a strange Joel. noise in the building and tracks it down to her mother's old room. 
taking a look inside, nope. she sees the entity sitting on the bed and realizes it's taken the form of her dead mom. The creature apologizes for being a bad mother and accuses the doctor of killing her, but she tells it to shut up. Rose refuses to feel guilty anymore, arguing she won't let her trauma destroy her, declaring to herself that none of this is real, but things are moments away from spiraling out of control. Okay, at this point, this demon is starting to get a little too transparent. Appearing yeah, as I someone's mean, mother who has already passed away is a clear sign that it's trying everything it can to get weak. under her skin. The reason this is interesting is because if the creature is already inside the house and choosing to confront the woman, it would seem like there's no reason why it doesn't just kill her. Pretending to be someone's dead mother is very different from pretending to be another living human because it's an immediate giveaway that you're talking to a supernatural being. With yeah, that in I mind, mean, this actually might reveal on. something really important about this evil monster monster, because the only reason it would take this approach is to drive up her trauma as much as it can. It can't be a coincidence that Rose has recently admitted to feeling traumatized by her mother's death, and now she's being forced to confront one of her oldest emotional wounds. The demon is I mean, clearly using this against her, but it also suggests that causing traumatic stress or anxiety must be a precondition for it to be able to actually haunt or kill you. I mean, now the truth like is, Rose should have already demon. been able to see through all of this evil entity's tactics, and if she had considered this revelation, she would have realized that the smartest thing she could do is close Wait, her eyes, Malcolm laugh now? at the creature, and smile back. If we know it needs our trauma to take advantage of us, then this should be our first line of defense <laughs> to make sure we aren't letting it affect us emotionally. Even meditating could be a useful tactic to fend off the demon, because it would help us block out external and internal emotional stimuli that could trigger our trauma. As silly as it sounds, it might be a lot more effective than trying to kill someone or attacking the demon, because a violent assault, even in self-defense, would only increase the trauma that you're putting yourself through. Soldiers have to go through <laughs> unbelievably intense training just so that they're mentally prepared for the psychological horrors of killing uh, someone. American so it's reasonable Michael. to assume a doctor who spent her entire career trying to help others would have a very hard time doing something like that. If Rose had taken more time to think things through and analyze the evil entity's patterns of behavior, she could have reached the same conclusion and wouldn't be as vulnerable to the creature's tactics. The entity starts smiling at the woman and Rose backs away trying oh, wait, to the, escape, but the, the creature whole, follows after her. It steps into the hallway and she oh, runs off boy. into the living room, but as she checks to see if the creature is close by, it suddenly appears behind yep, her. The entity throws the doctor to the ground and starts strangling her, but then Rose spots the burning lamp on the ground. Coming up with a plan, she rips the creature's hand off of her neck and slams the lantern into its face. The entity lets Ooh. go of her and the doctor quickly backs away, leaving the building as fast as she can. With the monster dead, Rose heads all the way is to her ex-boyfriend's place and he welcomes her in, asking what happened. Relieved, she apologizes yeah, for all die. the trouble she's caused him and begs him to keep her company tonight. The man forgives her, promising to stay with the woman forever. And that's when she realizes this isn't her ex-boyfriend. He starts smiling as Rose figures out she's still hallucinating, and the woman tries yeah, to see? run out of the apartment, but finds herself outside of the old house. She never escaped, and to make matters worse, the real Joel has just found her. And the woman heads back inside the building, terrified more. that she'll get him killed, and locks the door. It's the only way to keep him safe, but as Rose is hiding, the entity approaches her. There's nothing she can do to escape her fate, as the creature begins to climb down her throat. That's when Ooh. Joel manages to break the door edible. open and enters the house, finding Rose standing in the middle of a room. Oh, Terrified, no. he Joel, calls out her no. name and she turns around, revealing a huge no. grin on her face and Joel realizes getting back with your ex is never a good idea. But what do you think? How would you oh, come on? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and check out the How To Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day. All right, folks, and with that, that is where we're going to end off today's video. So, I want you all to remember Millions to like, find a comment, cost hold on. Plan. I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Down in the description will be a link to the original video. So, remember to support the original creators and all they do. And I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.